The Wood Knight is sponsored by I Would Like. This is Paul. Paul is happy, excited or even aesthetic. You can tell by the cheerful demeanour and upturned lips indicating a smile. Paul needs to build more unplanned furniture for his mother. This is the first project I've had since getting the combo machine fully up and operational. So it's the first time I've been able to buy non-dressed timber. However, we had a lot of scraps left over from her previous project builds. So the only timber that was needed was for two of the legs. In fact, the baskets used cost more than the rest of the build. After getting one side and one edge square, I can cut things to rough length at the miter saw, then rip in two at the table saw to get the thickness needed for the legs. At this stage, I left one edge and one face rough as the legs were oversized and it was easier to redimension everything at the joint time. All legs then could be cut to length, but I ran out of bench space and could only safely cut three at a time. Then onto the rest of the components. The rails first get cut to rough length, then ripped at the miter saw to final dimension. The smaller rails and separators were all cut on the cross-cut sled. Dominoes were used to make this stupid simple to assemble. It really cuts down on joinery time as everything is to a similar preset depth and height. At this stage I like to do a dry fit which for some reason I thought would be super good to do on top of my workbench. It wasn't super awkward at all. For the top, first I had to square up a small section of the kitchen benchtop pre-laminated stock, then it could be cut to length with the track saw. Then it could be cut to width at the table saw.
Before continuing work with the top, a few floors needed to be filled with epoxy. This has happened with pretty much all of the tops. Even on the A side, there is generally a void or not that needs taken care of. Once that was dried and sanded flush, I took it to the router table and eased all the edges with an eighth inch roundover bit. The legs received the same treatment. When sanding surfaces, I like to use a pencil to mark the whole board, HB or softer generally, so that I can tell where it has and hasn't been sanded. The short rails get a half inch dado cut in them to take the side panels. The matching grooves are cut in my legs using the edge guide I made last week. The panels are half inch MDF with Tazio veneer on them. They cut to dimension at the table saw. So this has come out pretty nicely. Um, the finish in particular, I didn't show the assembly and finish, but it's the same as what I've done for all the other furniture, particularly the hall table. Uh, the finish has come out a lot nicer on this without any uh, final sanding than the whole table did, which did get the final sanding after the last coat. So it's interesting to see my own skills develop over the course of the last, I think it's 12 pieces of furniture now. Uh, and that's just straight off the brush. It's actually pretty silky smooth. <coughs> um, what I didn't show was that the runners for the baskets are just these pieces of plywood with a rebate cut into the front and back. <coughs> So that just sits in there like that. Um, <coughs> these are quite large couches that we have here. So it sort of acts as a coffee table for a sitting area around the kitchen living area. So it's not quite lounge suite, or not quite the lounge room. So we don't need a coffee table down a bit lower to see a TV or anything like that. The, I'll, I'll get a photo of it, but the epoxy floor that I filled in actually is probably my favorite part of this because it's come out really nicely and adds a lot of visual interest to the uh, top of it. Thanks for watching.